I thank the Honourable Guest for his speech and I now look to Dr Tony Seale to continue the case for the opposition. Good evening everybody. Um, I was uh, born in that very quaint English village called Brixton and um, in there we had an education I suppose that was uh, problematic, it was difficult and what I'm going to argue today is, I mean a lot of this will be around my own experience, but that what we mean by British education um, I think actually, and I'm going to argue, is act, was, was actually historically a value and continues to be a value and when it went wrong it wasn't necessarily directly the fault of British education. As our previous speaker said, we're not racism deniers here. We, we, we acknowledge the reality of it. But, we, but the question, and when you go and vote, this is the issue, how are we defining what we really mean by British education and what does that actually mean? Ironically, you know, it, I, I used to remember that um, uh, my parents, uh, uh, in fact, I'm luckily enough, tomorrow morning actually going off to Jamaica to the sunshine while you guys are in the cold, so you can uh, enjoy that. But my parents uh, uh, um, uh, are from Jamaica, and we used to get, when I was younger, letters from my grand grandmother and grandfather, and the handwriting was immaculate, you know. And these were, pe I mean, we would say technically peasant people in, in rural Jamaica. And it, the grammar, the handwriting, the uh, punctuation was spectacular. 10 out of 10 for an English, and, uh, as I say that as an English teacher. And I remember in my comprehensive, we were all struggling to construct sentences in handwriting was all over the place. So here was a kind of strange situation. Here was I in the so-called mother country um, with all the best teachers allegedly in the 1970s, but yet my grandparents um, the, a so-called, and, that, and that, that wasn't the best school in Jamaica by any, by any means, they were getting a particular type of education. And it's that particular type of education that I want to talk about today. And I think that Oxford University recognises that, and those of you who are here in terms of the population group would recognise that. I think it's about ritual, I think it's about resilience, I think it's about rules and rigour. And what's interesting, my evidence for that comes from the actual anti-colonial generals and, 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 and men and women who were fighting the anti-colonial barrier. Let me give you one example. C.L.R. James, a Marxist, goes to Queen's uh, um, College in Trinidad and he can't help himself but almost kind of it, it, it seduced, sucked into that what we would recognise as an English public school education. That, I name another one, Nelson Mandela, Chinua Chebi, Wally Asu Inca, Nkrumah, Rex Nettleford in, in Jamaica. And, I, um, and if we go to the Asian side, Salman Rushdie, Gandhi, all brought up, all loving that kind of education. Because that basically is what made them, and that's really what... And why are they loving it? Read the biographies. There's a tension. There's a tension, yes, they're fighting the anti-colonial war, they're going out and fighting, but their education is built on this British way of working. And it's not about necessarily always about training civil servants. What it's at the end of it is this. It's these four things. The ritual in that education, the um, resilience you get, the rules, the rigour, and also Greek, Latin, and the Bible thrown in as well. That's actually es essentially a, a private school education. Essentially, that's the essence of it. And in a way, what it was designed for doing, it was designed to construct leaders. It was designed to construct leaders, but it was more than that. It was also based on a utopian perception of the world. Education comes in and it's about how we change the world, how we... So you look to the Greeks, you look to... You look to the Greeks, you look to Latin. 
and that underpins that education system. What happened to us poor guys running around in Brixton um, who had a comprehensive education when in the 70s we decided to scrap um, that tripart system, which I didn't agree with, grammar school, secondary schools, I was one of the first students my, my year to go into a comprehensive. And we suffered. We suffered in those schools. And we suffered because we were being experimented on in terms of child-centred learning. There was do what you want. The teachers, our teachers used to go to the pub and stay in there at lunchtime for about an hour, come back pissed and try and teach us. The, there was no inspectorate. What we used to happen was the inspector would come into the school, he would know the head teacher, shake hands, look, through, look, look over uh, into the classroom, have a cup of tea and then Bob's go home and that's it. There wasn't any inspectorate. There was no, we just was a, just a total free for, free for all. It was going on in that system. And so what happened was that Whereas our private school counterparts were getting their rigour, they were getting their rituals, they were getting their great colonial education. So we then, I, I move on as a teacher and, and, and taught in that same system. Black boys in that, in that situation were suffering in that, in, in, and disproportionately so in terms of exclusions and in terms of um, the education, the outcomes they got. But what used to happen, and this is the real issue, was that the 16-year-olds, white boys, could get jobs. So it didn't really matter. We had any, because it was about who you knew. So my, in my school, for example, most of the boys who left school who were white got jobs in the print because they knew somebody. We, we as kind of coming over as black students, we didn't know anybody and we didn't have the connections. So we relied on the school and it didn't deliver. So you, you then fast forward to a system now, and this is where I agree with what you're saying, and we had great evidence for that, about, if you like, the, the, the post-Govian world, where we're kind of returning back to trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our independent school counterparts. That's all what Gove was trying to do. He was just trying to say to working-class people that, look, just because you're poor, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these people. He knew because he was adopted, he understood what the difference is between uh, haves and have not. He got an idea. Even though he was a Tory, he still understood it. Yeah? And I think that what I'm arguing here is that the reason why migrants come into the country, learn English, and then in the end surpass all the other students in terms of the results. At the moment, London is leading the way in terms of academic achievement in the whole country. And if you look at who are those students in London that's doing that? Yeah. They are children of migrants, they're children who have learnt English, and then they've gone on, and they're getting this so-called horrible post-colonial education. Yeah? Yet they've got beautiful handwriting, they love the grammar, they love structure, they love rules, they love rote learning. Because that's the way it's set up and that's the, way, that's the way education works for them. What I do, plead with you to really vote for us. I beg for you to vote for us. <laughs> and one of the reasons why is that I think that the way in which education is structured now is that it's about a particular type of education. It's about a particular value. It's about a particular asset. This place, really this place that has a disproportionate amount of students who come from independent schools cannot with any conscience really vote against this. Because that is the value that really means you get the jobs. That's the value that means you get to the top universities. Don't tell us from a working class background that you should go and do child-centered learning when you're at the top of the tree doing something else. That's hypocrisy. The reality is that the British education has been a good one in the past. A particular type of education has been a good one in the past. And it certainly is gonna be a great one for the future of students going forward. And I'd like to end by simply a, a quote from Bob Marley. Again, another alleged anti-colonialist, but really in a sense, 
somebody who does get it in terms of what a British education should mean. He says, I no, have no education, I have inspiration. If I was educated, I would be a damn fool. I actually think what he really is saying is that, look, the education I had was a, simply I had the Bible, that's all I had to deal with. And that's really the basis for my education. And that if I had anything else, child-centered, fooling around in the sand, wrote learning that he got perhaps in Jamaica, that colonial education made me the genius that I am today. Vote for us. Vote, in a sense, um, against the motion that this is, that, that, that in fact, um, uh, this kind of racism is perpetuated in the system. It's not. What is great about British education is that, and a particular type of British education, is that it actually does, is, is, the, is the key to social mobility and the key to going forward for uh, black communities across the whole world. Thank you.